let's get let's start the meeting back up guys please Guys, please quiet down. The bill. I'd like to call my uh, next witness, uh, Dave Lapaka. Mr. Lapaka, would you? Uh, uh, Can we uh, please raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Name and address, please. David Lapaka, 316 Ward Street, Dunmore, PA, 18512. Thank you. Mr. Patrick, keep it off of the It's going to be about two minutes. I'd rather just ask him the questions. Go ahead. Sorry. Mr. Lapaka, where are you employed? Uh, Ruth and Bowen. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Ruth and yep. Bowen, we're a consulting engineering firm. Just pull that microphone up to your. Oh, to sorry. Your. Sorry. And I'm going to ask you to identify, if you would, for the board, what we'll have marked as an exhibit. Would you identify that for the board? Uh, this is the uh, existing uh, highway occupancy permit issued in 1986 for the said driveway. What does it say? What are the pertinent parts of it? Just if I have a continuing objection, it would be my position that it's relevant to the use in 1993, not with regards to 1986 permit approval. Overruled. We'll let him go. Yeah. If you can, when was that permit issued? Uh, the permit was issued in uh, July of 1986. And uh, with regard to that particular uh, permit, what are the pertinent sections? What does um, it say? Basically, it's the permit number, which is 513927, and the type of permit that was issued, which is a low volume driveway. And can you please describe for the board uh, the type of traffic that, uh, strike that. Is that a two page document? It is. And on the second page, does it show the actual driveway that was approved? It shows, yes, it shows the location of the proposed. And the with regard to that uh, particular document, uh, with regard to the driveway that was approved, are there any regulations that the Department of Transportation uses in calculating uses for what you've identified for that driveway? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, there, there's the ITE manual, which was referenced earlier, which is the uh, Institute of Transportation Engineers manual. And if you can, have you done any calculations with regard to the uh, Geisinger Clinic and with regard to this proposed facility with regard to traffic counts? Uh, lack of foundation. Oh, I'll gladly lay one. I thought we were expediting it. With, with regard to uh, that particular document that you have, how many uh, trips does it allow? What's the range? It allows between 25 and 750. Now, with regard to the... That's vehicles per day, not trips. With regard to the uh, Geisinger Clinic, based upon... You were here for the testimony today. I was. With regard to the size of this facility, approximately 21,000 square feet, you've heard the uh, particular uses that were allowed for uh, a uh, medical clinic. Correct. Uh, What's the calculation using the uh, accepted uh, principles that PennDOT employ for that? Um, we, we use uh, basically a medical office. Um, the use is based off of square footage. So the, actually, I, I believe the testimony earlier said closer to 23,000 square feet for the uh, facility. So based off of that, um, the calculation would, would suggest that uh, the vehicles per day or the trips per day would be 726 and the vehicles per day would be 363. Is that uh, within the uh, criteria that's permitted by PennDOT? It would be, yes. I and if we can, uh, why do you need a highway occupancy permit? What does this access? Uh, it accesses a state highway. It gives you permission to access a state highway with a driveway and or road, depending on the, the number of trips. So. 
you've done a calculation and it allows up to 750 with regard to the uh, Geisinger Clinic, the uh, calculation appears to be less than a third. Is that, is that correct? Well, what is that calculation? Well, I'll, I'll object to the Geisinger Clinic unless he knows what the Geisinger Clinic is actually. No, he's a, he's it, asking for a calculation. Based yeah, on I'm asking office. for a calculation he's based. Not, he's not asking I, for the this particular Geisinger. Right, the calculation is actually. Go ahead. It, Oh, Calculation is right. actually based off the square footage of the building, right. which is 23,000 square feet. Um, at that number, the, again, the vehicles per day would be 363, which are beneath the limit for a low volume driver. Now, with regard to uh, page two, uh, that shows uh, the adjacent property uh, referred to as the Memlo House. Is that correct? It does. And uh, approximately how many square feet are in the Memlo House? I believe from earlier testimony, there's approximately 4,500 square feet. Now, with regard to that particular facility, let's just assume for the, the sake of uh, putting something in there that you put 30 patients inside there and you had 11 employees. What would that calculate? Would that be the same number that uh, is used for the uh, Geisinger Clinic site? Well. The medical office building is calculated slightly different. It's calculated based off of square footage, not under employees. So based off of the square footage, if you added 4,500 square feet to the 23,000 of the existing facility, it would come up with 890 trips per day and 440 vehicles per day, as opposed to 363 and, and um, or 726 and 363. Now, you've testified that PennDOT allows up to 750. Correct. For a low-volume driveway. For a low-volume driveway. As a shared driveway with both of these buildings under your calculations, does it meet the criteria that has already been issued with that particular permit? It's well below what the maximum, maximum allowed is, correct. I have no questions for the witness if the board has it or any other counsel. Mr. Lopatka, with respect to Mr. Barrett's uh, objection earlier, is this the only highway occupancy issue for this particular property or has there been other ones since 1986? This is the only highway occupancy. It's the existing permit. Thank you. Do they need to be reviewed, uh, renewed here? May I ask questions? Yes. Do our highway occupancy permits renewed occasionally? I mean, depending on. Uh, I'm going to ask to a foundation. That's wide open. If you were to change, uh, say you were to tear this down and I, put a well, casino on there or something. Yeah, I mean, right now, Mr. Barrett's questioning. Go ahead, Mr. Barrett. Do they get reviewed occasionally? Occasionally. Okay. What would what would prompt a, a, renew, a renewal or review of a highway occupancy? I think, uh, you know, if, if uh, a new structure was constructed, if there was something similar to that, if that was torn down and something was rebuilt, um, for instance, if a residential, being that it's an R1 zone, if a residential use was added to that, naturally PennDOT would want to see what the difference in traffic uh, counts were um, based off of that. So change in circumstance can result in a change of highway occupancy permit change of circumstance. Yeah, I, I'm going to ask for a foundation. Does he mean no, a, a land development said, plan, he, a new building? He, he, he can answer the question. He, he's testifying as to highway occupancy permits. Say so again? a change in circumstance can result in a change in a highway occupancy permit? It can in certain instances. You've been up to the memo law properly lately? I have. What happened to all the trees? Do you know? Uh, objection. Don't. What does that have to do with traffic? Yeah, that, well, if you uh, I mean, go ahead, go ahead. What happened to all the trees? Do you know, sir? I, I don't know. What's, what, have you been inside the building at all? I was to the outside of the building. Did I you look been, inside the building at all? I have not been inside the building. Objection, relevance. Do you have any idea what the owner or the person with the option intends to do with that building? Which objection, building relevance. It's which, relevant to the highway occupancy permit. Which building? Change. Which building are you talking about? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you knew the building I was talking about. The building next door to the building that we're talking about here in Geisinger. Mm -hmm. 
Have I looked in it? No, I haven't looked in it. And you've confirmed that's a shared driveway, right? It's a drive according to the according to the map that's provided with the HOP, there's access to that property. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? No. Thank I you, can Mr. just redirect. With regard to the and I believe this is your testimony, with regard to the uh, Memo property based upon the square footage and the uh, Geisinger Clinic uh, as a shared driveway. Yes. It's, would you say it's about 50% of what's allowed? It would be approximately 400, 445 trips per day, and the, the, the uh, allowed is 750. So it's well, well below what, what would be required. If, if that property in question, the memo, if I'm saying it right? Memo. Memo, thank you. Uh, what's required to become part of that facility? extension of the treatment center mm -hmm. what, uh, what what effect would it have on your numbers based on so, the I, so the numbers based off of the, the treatment facility um, are based off of occupied beds so the occupied beds I believe in the treatment facility are 30 occupied beds um, based off of that the calculation um, would require 90 vehicles per day which is substantially less than than the uh, the well, maybe, maybe I didn't work right. If, if, if that was considered, if that was to be part of it, added on to it, add say I don't know how many bedrooms could fit in there, but we'll just say for lower number fifteen, would it have an adverse effect on your numbers? Would it change them dramatically? It would, based off of the existing facility, adding that, say we doubled it. So the vehicles per day, if we if we actually doubled um, our facility, would be it would be. 180 vehicles per day and that stays within is that within the guidelines that you're the guidelines of the, the low volume driveway are 25 to 750 okay. so it would be well below thank you just one follow-up question but of course the actual use would depend the actual number of cars would depend upon the use right no I believe it's asked and answered he he gave the foundation of how PennDOT calculates it. We all use the same manuals. I'm not asking about calculations. I'm talking about well, actual use. Well, I only offered him as an expert in traffic on I, calculations. I think it's too speculative anyway. What? We don't know what the actual use is. And secondly, we're not here on the Menlo property. I think the only application is for 125 Scranton Pocono Highway. Well, you're right, except that the ordinance says that uh, it's supposed to address the plans by the applicant, and this applicant has an option on that property. Uh, I, again, we don't know I wasn't allowed to cross-examine right. Mr. Barrett, but I don't even know that. that. That's fine. So, okay. the testimony on the traffic count is expected at this point? Uh, no, uh, that's a categorization. Additionally, we're offering options okay. and everything else that nobody right. here has. I've already ruled that it's too speculative. Anything else? No, I would ask that. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll move to strike his testimony since it's speculative. Yeah, no. well. Uh, <laughs> I said the memo of property was too speculative. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lepot. Lepot. Thank you. Uh, at this point, we would ask that the, uh, uh, all our exhibits be entered into the record. Any objection? What are, what are all the exhibits? Uh, I don't address only here tonight as opposed to last week? No, I'm offering them all. Why don't you tell me what they were last uh, week or do you know? Or uh, they're the... Uh, so that's including the uh, application as well as the partial hospitalization attached to the application. Is it what, I mean, sir? The application, the deed attached to it, the maps which we saw tonight anyway. I don't know about the... No, that's fine. Okay. Okay. So these are all attached No, I haven't offered the application. The application is the application. It's the pleading. Mm -hmm. I've offered the exhibits that Mr. Scanlon offered that evening. And I think it's really just the application and this. Uh, we also, we have the exhibits uh, this evening and the exhibits are uh, on the table over there and we okay, can have the- The uh, exhibits are accepted. I think we have reduced copies of those so we won't need the actual cardboard. All right, we'll, we'll supply that to the board. A, uh, 
smaller size if you don't have one. Oh, we'll also supply uh, Mr. Uh, Brazali's larger one if you don't already. You. That's the problem. It's what? Okay. You've got to pull it close to you. Yeah. The, we'll also supply, if you don't have it, smaller copies of the larger uh, map for purposes of the uh, record. Okay. So the applicant rests at this point? Yes. Mr. Barrett. Uh, procedure. Under 806 E, under abandonment of nonconformity, the nonconforming use of a building or land is discontinued, raised, removed, or abandoned for 12 months or more, or is discontinued or abandoned for 24 months in any three, three year period. The subsequent use of such building and or uh, land shall conform with the regulation of the district in which it is located and set. And then it goes on to address. Some of the exceptions, which I did not want to apply. So at this point in time, the applicant has failed to present any evidence regarding uh, the fact that to prove that the building was not abandoned. In fact, we've established through Mr. Sand that in fact the property was abandoned, the users abandoned. Uh, the applicant would have had to seek a special exception under 806E. No application had been sought under that. For that reason, I ask that the application be dismissed. If I may address that, Mr. 806. E3 says by special exception, the zoning board may permit an abandoned nonconforming use to be re reused, et cetera, et cetera, uh, where the site is highly unlikely to be used for conforming use and the proposed use to be compatible, which basically is the same thing as 806G. Uh, your objections overruled. Let's continue. Just for the record, no. your objections overruled. It, quiet. Let's no, it, it, if I can, just for the purposes of the record. Uh, that particular section talks about the burden of proof and the burden of persuasion. We have placed on it, there's two seminal cases. One's Latrobe uh, Speedway. The other one comes out of the city of Scranton. It's up near my law office. It's on Pine Street. It was a store. It showed the exact testimony that I put in the record. This was a medical clinic. It hasn't been changed on the inside. We have that. It's been offered. When they did that up on Pine Street, these went all the way up to Commonwealth Court and everybody cites to the two of them. So the burden of proof and the burden of persuasion, once I put that evidence on, rebuts that in the ordinance, it's now moved to them. So it, it actually doesn't even have application. And I've litigated that issue on that particular section before yeah. this board. I so, already ruled in your favor. Go ahead, Mr. Barrett. Thank so you. I still disagree. Uh, <laughs> the law is the law. Uh, uh, Mr. Pinnitar, as you know, uh, earlier this week, there was an amendment and an assignment to the application. Mm -hmm. Tonight, for the first time, we heard testimony from Mr. Sandin. Uh, it's been quite hot in here, it's quite late. And so, at this point in time, I ask that under the Municipal Planning Code, if the matter be continued, that we can give an opportunity to present evidence on another day. I, I would object to that. This is the second time that we've come. Uh, we waited for two other items. Uh, I have, we are not here for any exhaustive time period. I would ask that they start their case. There's no reason why the board is sitting here and we have it. Uh, there is, there are no grounds with regard to it, and I do thank the gentleman for opening the window. It is now, at least down where I'm at, uh, quite cool. So I, I don't think there's any basis for that. I find it prejudicial. We did with the. Uh, I, I, I find it prejudicial. <laughs> well, this my, is the second bigger, time my we've come. Your concern is so many people came tonight, and I hate to see them have to go home without being heard. I'd really like to hear from whoever is in the audience that would like to be heard. That's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll sit back and if, and unless the board, back. unless the board feels otherwise, uh, I think I'd like to hear from. No, I think that's fine. Yeah, and we would like if Mr. Barrett would start with his case, so we know who his clients actually are. You know, there's been a lot of objection. I don't know who his client is. I don't even know if they have standing. I assume he owns property up in that area, but. All right. Right now, we're going to we're gonna let the audience come up. Whoever wants to speak, come up over here. Will you please uh, raise your right hand? If you solemnly swear to testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Uh, name and address, please. My name is Anne Marie O'Malley, no relation. And I live in the Lutherwood Complex, One Lake Scranton Road, Scranton, Pennsylvania. Thank you. We, this complex of Lutherwood, it's 120 apartments, which means we have at least 120 people living. It's filled all the time. 
Most of them, not all of them are senior citizens, some, some are disabled. And we feel we should be able to live out the few years we have left without lo looking over our shoulder to see if somebody's there to grab the little old lady with white hair and glasses because she has money in that purse. And they say, oh, they, they can't come out of there. Even the federal penitentiaries and all, with all the guards in the world, they break out. So don't tell me if somebody wants to get out and if they decide they want something, they're not gonna come up to Lutherwood. And yes, you can see Lutherwood from this property and there is very sparse trees. There's even a path coming down. So we feel at this time, it, it's not in anybody's benefit that, that this facility would be put there. Then too, there's Lake Scranton, the beautiful Lake Scranton that people use walking around every day. If I was gonna walk around Lake Scranton, which I couldn't, I would think, am I gonna walk around with that place up there? What if one of them comes over and pops me on the head? And that's very possible. Again, Excuse me, I have the mic. Excuse we're, we're, me. If I can, Mr. Penatar, just a ruling that I have a continuing objection as to standing. Uh, there's been no uh, discernible uh, interest. There has to be a property interest with regard to my application. Uh, I understand uh, that the woman uh, that is testifying is a uh, tenant over in uh, Lutherwood, which is a... Uh, a facility that was identified up in that vicinity. I don't believe that she has demonstrated standing with regard to the board. So if I can just have one, an objection to standing, and if, if I'm so, overruled. So the other one is with regard to any characterization of the persons that are there. These persons have been detoxed. They're in recovery. They are our sons, our daughters, our family members, and the people that are very much in support of that at this evening. First of all, I, I do object we, to his your, being able to interrupt objection. my statements. I wouldn't do that to him, and it certainly isn't polite. And I really think was very ignorant. Now, so I'm saying Lake Scranton. Peachy and W can come in and close it down. It would hurt so many people. And yet I would, one that would not walk around there with this facility up there because it abuts right to the property. Thank you for your time. Thank you. It's a continuing objection. So noted. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to so help you, God? Yes, I do. Uh, name and address, please. Les Spindler, 1451 Bulwer Street, Scranton, PA, 18504. S P I N D L E R. Spindler. 1451 Bulwer Street, Scranton. Okay. I know from experience. I, I, hang on a second. Dan, we're taking people from all over the city at this point here. Um, Mr. Spindler, what's your relationship to this project? I just have saw a family member that went through a treatment center, and I want to give my opinion how helpful it is. I, I, I think I don't want to open up this too far. Right, I mean, right. We're going up to West Mountain for testimony here. I mean, I, I think the neighbors should, uh, up in that area should be heard, but going beyond that, we'll be here all night. And uh, I'll say just the way it is. I'm sure everyone's thinking the same thing. So I, I, I just think this this testimony from this individual that far away is going above and beyond. I, I, if I can, it's just, my freedom of speech. If I can, uh, with regard to standing, if he has persons that are going through uh, treatment that can be a resident of that facility. I actually think he does have standing, so I would have an objection to that with all due respect That's to Mr. Gattens. I, I've heard someone else that so miscategorized. We're, we're, we're going to allow testimony from everyone tonight, uh, even though no, your objection I, I, before was regarding standing. It is, and I think he has identified an interest that he has persons that would be eligible for this particular treatment. So I, I think that they're standing with regard to that. It isn't that I own a property over on Dartmouth Street where I grew up and it has nothing to do with I'm having a hard time there. hearing you. So I, I don't mean to be right. And after you, it's in the background, we're getting this. Yeah, I, I, I understand. Uh, with regard to standing, I think that there's uh, various cases that are on it. Uh, I believe if he has a family member that is eligible for this, I, mean, he I don't mean any disrespect to him at all or, or you know, what the situation is, but I, I, I just feel 
that we're opening the door wide here for everyone to speak tonight. And if that's the case, then we'll that's, open it wide and, and just let everyone talk tonight. Thank you. That's why I asked Mr. Spindler what his relationship to this place yep. is. Go and ahead, I, go I ahead, Mr. Spindler. I didn't see your sticker when I said that, so. Go ahead. Am I allowed to speak? Yes. Well, uh, my daughter had a problem. She went to a treatment center. Now she's a very productive member of our community. She's a hairstylist. She's a senior hairstylist at a salon downtown. She changed her whole life around. She goes to the gym every day. She eats healthy. And she's made a wonderful person out of herself. And uh, as of last September, she even became a professional wrestler. And she's <laughs> contacted from people all over the area. She's wrestled in Pottstown. She became a women's champion in the World Worldwide Wrestling Alliance. And my point being, if it wasn't for a treatment center, she might not even be around right now. And I, and I want, and thanks to Mr. Connaboy and Clearbrook, they were a huge help, and they helped turn her life around. And as I said, she's a productive member of our community now, thanks to a true drug treatment center. So I hope you pass this. Thank you. Thank you. Please uh, raise your right hand. If you saw me swear to testimony, you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. We do. Uh, name and address, please. My name is Judith Soma. Please speak I into the microphone. I reside at 2001 the Cleveland Avenue. What's your, la what's your name again? I absorb in taxes for the Should privilege of living. Your name, your name, please. Just give your name and your address. My name is Judith Soma, 2001 Spell. Cleveland Avenue. Spell your last name. S-O-M-A, Scranton, Pennsylvania. My name is Richard Fibus. I live at 303 Hillside Manor, Scranton, PA, 18505. My parents are Judy's neighbors. I live at, they live at 1910 Cleveland Avenue since 1967. And if I may approach, I did provide one exhibit I'd like to provide for the commission. Is that okay? Sure. I haven't seen it, so. You have to show it. Thank you very much, Mr. Fibes. Go ahead, Okay, I am here tonight to represent my husband, Dr. Joseph Soma, and myself, as far as 2001 Cleveland Avenue is regarded. It has been stated that no property borders on the, uh, the facility. Our property is right up against the back of the parking lot. The other day I went out and found a fence that had been put up, and now the light from that fence blocks our garden. Our garden is two feet from the fence. Also, uh, our uh, greenhouse is a couple of feet from the fence. My bedroom looks right out onto the parking lot. There is no shrubbery, very few trees. So we are in full view of that parking lot. Also, if I stand up there, I can see the facility itself. I am not against the facility. I think it's a wonderful thing. I think it, we need it. I think Pennsylvania needs it. My son is a recovering addict. He is, was an addict. He now works in Michigan in a facility that you were trying to put up. No drugs, no doctors, nothing. The people are there voluntarily. He says, Mom, don't let it come. You cannot trust them. I said, he said, I don't care. They if can I can, just for the purposes of the record, Mr. Mr. Penitar. They cannot stop these people. I have a continuing objection. You do. Thank you. Therefore, I would like to state that uh, also, you know what, also I'd like to mention, we were offered seven years ago a million for our property. I asked that same person the other day, 
okay, our property's for sale. What would you do? I don't want it. I don't want to live in that area. I, I'm going to object to hearsay. I'm and, sorry, and, but... And I don't even have a facility if their property values are declining. Yeah, okay. excuse me. I didn't talk when you were talking. No, no I... I, okay. I have an objection. I'm going to make this quick. My husband is 94 years old. He built that house. He owned part of that mountain up there. He sold the property off, donated the money to charity. Thank and you. I'm saying he's just beside himself on this, and I just don't know if this is a way for a 94 year old man to finish his life. But my former associate when I started as a commercial real estate broker in 1997 was Pat Salmon, MAI, expert appraiser, salesperson, who I have nothing but the highest degree of respect for. However, I do have the following item I'd like to add to his testimony. If I, you, I'm going to object. If you would knock that building down, that, any of the uses, for example, Plaza 550 would love to put another location on, on East Mound. There's such a tremendous need for housing on East Mountain with the amenities of Lake Scran, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, this, is the, this is a wonderful I, I, use I, I, in the I, wrong I, I, location. I, 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 I'm I, I, going to have a specific I, I, objection. I, 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 and, I, I, and if I can, if I can, I'd ask that the testimony as was granted to uh, counsel be stricken from Mr. Fibus on that point. In response, um, we, we are, well, when it comes to the public, we're very lenient as to what we hear. Right, right, right. We're we're going to listen to it. There's a term, uh, Attorney Jones, called economic obsolescence. Uh, I didn't. You're use, killing I, the value I, of I the neighborhood the by putting this particular facility. There, are, I deal with developers all the time in my business as a licensed real estate broker for 33 years. There are many brokers who would knock that building down put a high-rise residential elevator building in and have something very much needed in the city of Scranton, sir. With all due respect, I've been sitting here five weeks listening to your side. Please listen to mine. The, the uh, item that I've provided are 10 homes on Cleveland Avenue. The exhibit shows that on average, the average taxpayer on Cleveland Avenue pays $8,300, some as low as $6,400, some as high as $10,000 in taxes. Very difficult to resell a home. The average resale home in the city of Scranton is in the $100,000 range. These homes range from two hundred dollars to $600,000 plus. Dollars. You are absolutely destroying the neighborhood. You have a wonderful use. I support recovery. I support the use. I have two developers lined up who would gladly develop this project in a Donald Trump Keystone Opportunity Zone where the developer would have tax benefits and would not be wrecking a residential neighborhood. You have a wonderful use, but in the wrong parcel. I can help your people. I will do it no charge. I will show you 10 locations in Opportunity Zones where this use would fit in with the surrounding industrial and retail. It's not fair what you're doing. We pay the most taxes. The most. Put this in Green Ridge. Put this in Marywood South. Don't put it in our neighborhood because it's impossible to sell our homes as it is. The Square State School for the Deaf. Pat will explain you the listing. It's nine buildings. See, you want to have room to expand this facility. You have no room to expand. You have a 30-bed facility. We want a 200-bed facility for recovery in an industrial zone in the city of Scranton in an opportunity zone. That's what we want. Not for people who have a two to $600,000 home in a residential neighborhood. I grew up there. Our side of the highway played their side of the highway. Football, basketball, baseball. I walked through Judy's house to get to Lake Scranton. I walked through the Elks Club to get to Lake Scranton. Look, I know a little bit about this subject matter. I'm going to tell you one thing. Your highway occupancy permit must be re-reviewed by PennDOT for the following reason. 
we have to object. There was no mi, night mi, usage. Mr. Fibus. When Geisinger was there, Rich, it was days second. only. All Rich, right. hold on one second. Hold on one we, second. we got your point. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. It, I, uh, and we, we will not accept this. Thank you. Yeah, we, we, if the, I can, Mr. Fibus, I have some questions. Yes, uh, sir. Do you own any? Uh, do you hold any licenses from the state of Pennsylvania? I'm I'm a Pennsylvania Association of Realtor licensed real estate broker since 1991. And with regard to uh, your testimony today, are you offering into evidence any appraisals of any of the properties that you've uh, described? I'm ask, I'm, I'm offering that, in public record. These are not. Appraisals. These are what we pay in taxes. These are what the home sold for. I'm confident in what I've provided you in terms of my testimony. It, I'm asking you, with regard to your testimony today, with regard to your license, there are certain regulations that require you to perform certain acts before you give an opinion. Is that correct? This is not an opinion. This is public record. No, There's you no offered, opinion here. You offered testimony, I sir. took the testimony off public record. No, I, you've offered testimony. And my question to you is, have you performed any appraisals of any of the properties that you have offered testimony this evening tonight? I grew up in half. I, so I'm going to take that, let the record reflect that, I the, grew answer up in is, half them. that the answer is no, that there is none uh, offered. I've been selling real estate for 33 years. Okay. Are you familiar, are you familiar with Nevin Irvin? Mm -hmm. He's a friend of mine. He's a good guy. Exhibit. Nevin, like Pat Salmon, is a highly qualified, highly successful appraiser. Pat Salmon, your expert testimony, is an MAI, a master appraiser. He testified on your behalf, and I had no objection with him other than the fact that if you knock the building down, you can expose yourself to developers for thousands of uses. So just because Pat Salmon couldn't sell the property for Heinerfeld, doesn't mean Rich Fibus for Caldwell Banker Commercial couldn't have sold the property. I, I, I've done some development of myself, similar to Billy Rinaldi. I've done some development of my own. If you'd like to question on me that, that's fine too. With regard, to your, with regard to your testimony, your testimony is, is that uh, you could develop this property if you knock the building down. Is that correct? Did you never said that. Well, I thought you did. But I said that some developer could come in. Pat's testimony was that three acres of land is unacceptable for a residential mid-rise developer. And my testimony is, if you take, for example, Plaza 550 on Clay Avenue in the city of Scranton, I believe that building, or a building such as that, would be quite good on that property. Yeah, if, okay. if I can, with regard to this particular property, are you aware of the restrictions that prohibit development? Guys, we're going to have to quiet down for it's the audience for sure. So you don't, you're, you're, you're rich. rich. Uh, if, I, if I can, you are, get your question. with regard to the premises, the Geisinger Clinic, are you aware of the constraints on the development that are in the deed? Are you aware of it? Either are or you aren't. I have not seen the deed. Okay, now with regard to the plaza that you've identified, how many parking spaces do they need for that particular facility? One per apartment. Okay, how many apartments are there? I don't have that many. You don't have that. No. So you have, you have no opinion you as know, to- the property, it's on Clay Avenue. It would be wonderful for a location. Uh, and, and how many parking spaces would you need for a high rise. Generally one to two per unit. Yeah, okay. And, and with regard to the constraints on this property, you couldn't get the parking, could you? Well, Did you your, do your experts have testified there's an excess of 100 parking spots. But you're building a building now. Yeah, and also I would, the other thing I would do is if I was the owner, not only would I put the building there, I would provide additional parking, I would knock down the building to the right where, where the trees all got knocked down there. Uh, on a property they and don't By have. the way, they removed, I believe, I don't know if the stumps were removed. But. Uh, 
on a property they don't own. So that. you would you well, would they, they remove the trees to make it look commercial. So you would build I'm talking on about the memo property. The memo property right. that that is not before the board tonight right. that they don't own. So as part of your development you would wreck well, that it, too. It is with regard to the highway occupancy permit. Yes, which but also what, in the highway occupancy permit you failed to mention you'll be using the property at night. Geisinger was not using the property tonight, but, therefore PennDOT's gonna want to read with regard to this to particular it, yeah. property, you said you would level the Memlo house. Is that correct? I didn't say. I said if I needed additional parking and I was the owner. If you were. I, 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 would, I would use that for parking, sure. Yeah. All righty. So with regard to this, you have no appraisals. I'm going to I, I'm gonna interrupt you. I, I think we're off track, like way off track of our testimony no, right maybe now. Maybe I was trying I, to make both, too From many both points. sides. I, I, let's get, can we get back to the point if you're finished if, your testimony? If I can, I have, and I will follow up with the appropriate uh, agencies. Uh, the gentleman is offering valuation. In order to offer valuation, uh, if you we, can we didn't accept that. offering valuation license, based on we, public we, record. You, Bill, you're, you're required stop to have putting words in my mouth. We didn't accept any valuation from him. I understand that, but he has oral testimony. Come on, buddy, give me okay. a break. I think we're done with them. I'm not a lawyer. You are. Rich, Rich, I think we're done with them. We're not accepting anything. It. Let's move on to the next speaker, please. Hello. Please, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Name and address, please. Edward Moore, 1237 Rundle Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, before you give testimony, uh, could you, you guys from the audience, please do not speak from the audience. We can't hear up here. You all have a turn to come up and speak. Please do not speak from the audience. I'm sorry. M-O-O-R-E. You may proceed. I don't have the sticker on. It fell off. Um, <laughs> Uh, so my name is Edward Moore, I, and I, everything that's going on, I don't understand a lot about it, but here's what I do understand. I have eight years of sobriety. Um, I have a daughter who's in sobriety, and I lost a daughter-in-law uh, to it. I do know what the facilities do. Do I understand some concerns that of a preconceived notion of getting uh, uh, hit on the head? I, I do understand it, all right? a preconceived notion. But eight years ago, so Clearbrook gave me an opportunity, and a supporting community gave me an opportunity. Not just Clearbrook, a supportive Scranton community gave me an opportunity. I run a multi-billion dollar section of a finance company now. All right, and, it's not, and it's from hard work, and it's from, it's from getting sober, it's from doing those things. And it's from a supportive community. I definitely understand concerns. I don't know all the legal stuff that goes on, nor do I care to, I wanna know. All right, it seems like there's a lot going on here. But, <clears throat> Sobriety comes from all different places. It comes from, you know, somebody's, uh, somebody's uh, child who's never had a problem. The parents have never had a problem. Uh, my parents didn't. I, I, got, I got lucky. All right, so my mother still to this day says, when are you cured? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I'm not. Um, <clears throat> so I drove down from Boston because it was supportive, because this community was supportive of me. I, uh, <clears throat> I was in a meeting in Boston. I came down for it because this community was supportive of me, I need to be supportive of the same community. Um, and the sobriety, commu the sobriety community here is, intent is, is big. Um, I, like I said, I don't understand, and I, have, I, I, I do understand concerns that the other parties do have. All right? But I am here to tell you that not everybody is like that. Um, and unfortunately, that can happen anywhere you go. It can happen on my street. Um, I live on a pretty nice street, I think. Uh, I let my kids run around and play. Uh, I don't have my eyes on them 100% of the time. Do I have concerns? Sure. I do, I, I have a, there's an app that showed me every sex offender. I mean, I don't say, I'm not down here complaining about it. It is what it is. I live in that community. I have to adjust to some things. And, I, and it's some things I like and some things I don't like. But I know that this is important. It's an opioid epidemic. Right? It's a, there's an epidemic in this country. So mm -hmm. the communities need to take their part in it. And we're all responsible for it. Just like some people don't have kids in school, they still pay school taxes. So, like, we all are responsible to help solve that problem. So that, that's just my piece on it. Uh, and thank you for the time. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. 
Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help I, you, God? I do. Name and address, please. Marvin Broder. I reside at 1900 Cleveland Avenue in Scranton. Thank you. Uh, I have resided there for the past 55 years. Actually, I designed the development before it was, well, it was still woodland as far as that goes. Uh, as a planner, as a, as a, a planning and zoning uh, consultant, I have two, two concerns with what, I, some of the, what I've heard here tonight. One of them has to do with the fact that the use was presented as a use that was- Sir, if you could pull that microphone towards sure. a little bit. The, the use that's, that is in question was presented as a use which is less intensive than the use which existed previously. Uh, I take exception to that from the standpoint that in your own ordinance, it specifies that that use is only allowed in the industrial zone or in the, or in the institutional zones. It's not, whereas the use that, was, that it is replacing is allowed in just about every other zone in the city of Scranton. To me, that reflects the fact that uh, that is a more intensive use, not a less intensive use. Uh, that's point one. Uh, point two, I have to go back to the issue that you said it's over and done, like I've heard that before, but I'm still concerned about the question as to whether or not uh, we're dealing with uh, a variance issue or a non-conforming use and a special exception issue. And I'd like to raise that, op offer my objection to that ruling for the following reasons. Uh, Attorney Penitor, I wasn't allowed evidence on that particular and again, point. The that's already been decided. May I continue? Okay. Um, when a use is allowed, Dan, I thought uh, you, uh, Mr. Browder, we, we've already we've already beaten that horse to death. Let's go to something else, please. Uh, no, I, that was it. I, I just pulled, I offer my uh, objection to that to that ruling. I think it's an error. Okay. If I can. Question for uh, Dr. Browder. Dr. Browder, uh, thank you for your testimony this evening. You also represent the uh, borough of Dixon City, is that correct? That's correct. And you also had a uh, treatment center in a, uh, uh, an R3 zone, is that correct? Do you, do you know what zone you had it in? I don't, I don't recall. All right. Are, you are, know are how you, many ordinances I've written? Yeah, I know you've written quite a few, uh, some that I've dealt with you on. Uh, with regard to uh, the uh, a treatment center that was put in Sinewas over near the Harbor Freight last year. Your ordinance prohibited that, is that correct? You couldn't I, have it there. I don't recall. You don't recall? You don't recall that being reversed in court? No? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Name and address, please. Uh, Kristen Bender, B-E-N-D-E-R, 1970 Cleveland Avenue, Scranton, 18505. And my name's Kathy Harrington, 102 Lilac Lane, in Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505. So I'm just gonna start. Um, I bought my house on Cleveland Avenue in 2012. Um, I'm a mother of three, and I just want to be heard to say that I do believe in treatment. I have family in recovery. Um, it is definitely serves its purpose where it's pre zoned for. Um, it should stay there. We, I convinced my husband to move up to East Mountain, pay the ridiculous taxes, because I grew up there, and it's a wonderful place to raise a family. It's a safe place. It just, as a mother, you can't you can't describe how it is so important to just know that your kids are safe. And I invested in Scranton, I bought my house there, I am raising three wonderful kids there that I just, just want to keep safe and healthy and happy. And I don't think that they can guarantee that it's not going to be other uses for this facility, that the people that are there are not going to provide risk, increased risk in East Mountain. Um, I live right there. I can go through Judy's yard to the lake, and I take advantage of that all the time. Um, my kids play outside. We walk the lake all the time. And they cannot guarantee to me that there will not be harm to come from them from this and that no other uses will come from this. So 
it is not zoned for that, and that is the that is the correct thing. Just keep it a neighborhood, keep it residential. Let us raise our families where we chose to buy homes. Thank you. So if you can't tell, I'm Kristen's mom. She's one of my four daughters. I basically almost bribed their husbands to be moving back to the city of Scranton. Some of them were in Philly, some lived in Clark Summit. I live up on the East Mountain. I love East Mountain. I was raised in Southside. I love Southside. I talk to them about it's safe up there, you pay the higher taxes, but it's a residential facility. It's residential, it's not for a treatment facility. I have my doctorate in nursing. I work as a psychiatric nurse practitioner. I work with addiction. There's definitely a need for this facility, definitely. Not in a residential facility. We have many places in the city of Scranton that you can go and you could open up these facilities. In the residential facility, it's not a plus to the, in, you're not a resident if you're going to be there and be transit. You're not a resident if you're not sitting and living there and paying taxes. We are a residential facility. This city is, I'm sorry, we're a residential neighborhood. This is a transit facility that people would be coming and going. That doesn't meet the code, the HUD code or any other code. I don't know all about these different codes, but all I know is that I knew I was moving up to East Mountain and it's very hard to open up a business up there. I thought when this first was talked about, I never even thought it would get to this far. It's not within the standards of a residential neighborhood. We don't go next door. We're not gonna go there and share recipes. We're not gonna go there and share, you know, the garden. I have a beautiful garden. I go to my neighbors, pick the flowers. This is important. That's not going to improve that neighborhood, our neighborhood on East Mountain. As I said, I have a recovery in my family. There's many people afflicted by addiction. It is definitely needed, and it's needed in Northeast PA. I work with patients. They sometimes have a dual diagnosis. That being said, I am 100% in support of Dickie Conaboy. He does great work. I know him for a very long time. I just know that he doesn't live down here in, East, in Scranton. None of the people here today are living up and gave addresses of East Mountain. None of the people that are sitting here being paid by I don't know who, but they don't live on East Mountain. We do. I've lived there for 30 some years. I've raised my girls there. I now have 11 grandchildren, three that live there. And within a walking distance of that facility, I have how many? Eight more. So please, take that into account when you're voting. And please, do not let this go in. Yes, let it in Scranton somewhere, but not up on East Mountain. Not where we have a resident. These are not residents. These are not neighbors. They don't belong in our community. The facility. Thank you. Uh, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do, sir. Name and address, please. My address is 837 North Lincoln Avenue uh, in Westside, and I came up here today just... Your, your for, name, sir. I'm Frank Spore, and I own 837 North Lincoln. Uh, sir, uh, the reason that I came up is, it, uh, as this young lady and, and, and mother came up before you, um, they they were they were fearful about their children. My child attends school there on East Mountain. My child was here with me in the in the audience earlier, who's gone home to bed. She goes to Dr. Howard Gardner. Um, she's been up there, and so um, I wanted to add that ten years ago, I came into recovery and I was given an opportunity. Today I own, a, I own a beautiful home, I own a brand new vehicle, I own a couple new vehicles, and I'm com considered to be a taxpayer and a legal law-abiding citizen. If I get a parking ticket downtown here, I go, I park, I, I park, I get a ticket, I come right over here and I pay. I don't break any laws. I don't do anything to, to destroy anyone else's property. I have a fantastic property. I have a fantastic life. What these people need is an opportunity to have that very life. 
10 years, 11 years ago, I stood before a judge and he said, Frank, I'm gonna give you one opportunity, one. I'm still riding on that one opportunity. I'm proof that it works. I'm proof that I can make, I make all my, I, you could almost say I'm a pillar of the community. I'm the, I'm the, ju I'm the judge of elections for Lackawanna County. I try to do the best I possibly can each and every day. I really would like to see the board give a whole lot of other peoples, a whole lot of other men, just men, a future and a life like mine. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to so help you guys? Yes, I do. Name and address, please. My name is Kenneth Rowland, R O H L A N D. I live at 856 North Main Avenue in West Scranton. Uh, I am also part of the recovery community. By the grace of God, we have a great support group in the recovery community. I'll be sober 10 years on September 2nd. Uh, like many, like many others that suffer from this disease of addiction, I suffered for a very long time and a lot of people had to pay, pay a very, very high price for me to want to get sober as bad as I did. Thank God there was a treatment facility there for me. You know, I tried before and when I went out, when I came out, before these 10 years, I tried, one t I tried a couple times before and I went, before I came out, I didn't have a place to go. I didn't have a long-term facility to go to and I didn't have the support that I needed because I didn't have it there, because I, I burned so many bridges with my family. And I went back to the streets. And I wasn't able to get sober. Because there wasn't a facility like this one that they're trying to put up. Okay? People were dying. And that's a, that's a known fact. That's it. Thank God I'm not one of them that are dead. Okay? It's a fatal, deadly disease that we are fighting. And we are on the front lines of it. You're looking at them back there, and the people with recovery stickers on. We're on the front lines, guys. We want, we want to help. And I understand the fear of, the, of people in the, in the area. But just because you don't understand, don't be afraid of it. Please, get educated. Know what you're doing. Know what you're talking about. You know, I understand your prop you're talking about property values. Well, property values are such a big concern. Why did they build multi-million dollar homes of stones throw away from Marwood? Like seven or eight of them in the past 10 years. That's all I have. Thank you very much. God bless. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? So help me God. Name and uh, address, please. My name is Ed Madsen, 102 Watchers Drive, Scranton, PA, 18505. Uh, I'm here to just ask a couple questions. Uh, number one, I believe the zoning board is here to protect the citizens of Scranton. Uh, would you agree with that? Is it here to protect the citizens, or what's it here for? I would say so. It, okay. It, it, we're here to protect both parties. Right. Okay. But I mean, you're here for the citizens. Somewhere along the way, somebody deemed that zone R1, which is residential. From what I read, my wife read a lot, is the highest form of residential. Okay. Uh, so it's not deemed for this. I understand they want a special exemption. And by no means are, am I against anybody recovering. And I'm sure you could have 200 people come up here, and, which thank God they got the recovery. But if you guys said no to this facility there, they could put it somewhere else, right? Could they? It's up to, it's up to is the Is there other zoning in the city that this is acceptable? It's up to the applicant to apply someplace. It's up but is it acceptable it. somewhere else in the zoning? I, I'm sure there's other areas that is yeah. acceptable. So like if you guys got denied here, if I could ask you a question, sir. You could go somewhere else, correct? No. You can't? Well, your opinion is we can. 
Give me the location where it can go, not the zone, one that allows for the use and additionally would allow for this type of facility. What building do you have? I'm not, listen, you all I know one. is I read the okay, zoning. So you don't have one. It's allowed in commercial. My I, wife will be up here and she has all the sites. I understand, things. you asked me a question, so I But you can't put it anywhere else. I, I answered your question. Okay. Uh, no, regard, you can't. Okay, so he said no, we can't. Fair, with regard, he asked me a question. With regard to the Fair Housing Act, we've all been through it. We've been through it in Dixon City with Dr. Broder. We've been through it here. You have to allow for this use in the, a residential zone. We all know that. We know what the federal law says. So, yes, we could put it on this particular site. They have an ordinance. They passed it here that says we can put it as long as we hit certain criteria, and we've offered expert testimony on that. So, yes, we can put it at this facility. That's okay, where it's but at. It, as, as a neighbor of this facility, it is not a prime opportunity for that neighborhood, which for some reason the city of Scranton zoned an R1, okay? I've been, I watched a lot of zoning meetings. My wife comes to a lot of zoning meetings. And many times at the zoning meetings, the board gives people options, okay? Whether to cut down to two apartments or cut down to three apartments, I think these folks have a lot more options. I don't think they should be able to, uh, to force us into something that the neighborhood really is not registered for and doesn't really want. And it's nothing against those folks that are recovering. So that's all I have to say. Any questions? Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Name and address, please. Joseph Beck, B-E-C-K, 301 North Bromley Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania. Thank you. I, uh, I'm not familiar with the zoning. Uh, I'm just up here to give my, my uh, my um, testimony. You know, I'm hearing a lot of uh, understandable concerns um, with the families. Uh, you know, there's a stigma. I am I am in recovery. Uh, I have four beautiful children at home. I have a wife. I'm a productive member of society today. Um, you know, I think we watch a lot of television uh, about um, addiction and, uh, you know, I never went once went to a treatment facility and uh, bopped somebody over the head uh, walking to, uh, to a meeting. You know, uh, we're not bad people. Um, we're sick people trying to get well. Uh, and I keep hearing, uh, I support recovery, but just not here. I don't want to. I don't want to be a part of it. I want it to be done, but I don't want to be a part of it. So, like, if not you, who? Uh, you know, this. We have to lift the stigma and realize that uh, we are sick people trying to get well. We're not bad people. That's all, guys. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Name and address, please. Christian Spangenberg, 31 Pennybrin Drive, Scranton, PA. Folks, this touches me in many different ways and for personal reasons. I'm a re retired federal law enforcement officer. I'm also, and had been at some point in my career, a case manager. I work currently at a hospital that deals with 500 per month behavioral health, mental health, and addictive people that come into our hospital. I see death on a daily basis. We have crisis workers that help our sick people, sick patients. As everyone stated here before, no different than anybody else. 
But I will tell you one thing. Operationally, from the facility, I have concerns. We've talked and we've heard testimony before about people coming to the facility, and in particular, visitors. Visitors would be checked. My facility, we go through bags. Visitors come into that facility. Everyone has the best intentions for treatment and care, and that's what we want. But when you have visitors that come in with the wrong intentions, that go, that introduce drugs and contraband into the facility, that's not helping anyone here and any of our patients. So, operationally, I have some concerns about security-wise here at this facility, grave concerns. Because guess what? We all want the best for everybody. And again, I see it on a daily basis. I work with these patients, and I want the best for them. What makes it even a little worse for me personally, I have a brother, my youngest brother and I, who's in state prison right now as a result of being an addict. So it does hit home for me, but living up there on the mountain, it's a great place to live. And folks, everyone deserves a place for treatment. And I would even offer my services to Dick and company to say, look, if you can use me in any capacity, I'd be more than happy to help you. But folks, that place there, in my professional opinion, is not the place to be. There's other places that we could use within the city, and more importantly, if you want to treat as many people as you possibly can, which I would say we have to because we do have an epidemic here in Pennsylvania, why not explore other opportunities? That's all I'm saying. Thank you, folks. Is there anybody else that wants to speak? Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Name and address, please. Kathleen Madsen, M-A-D-Z-I-N, 102 Watrous Drive, Scranton, PA, 18505. I would just like to start. If I can, uh, I believe that the individual testified at the planning commission, uh, her Residence is nowhere near. I'm a member of the Southside Neighborhood Association. I'm vice president. Uh, I have standing at the zoning meeting. If I can, uh, with regard to this particular property, it's miles away. It is not miles away, sir. Uh, unfortunately, we let everybody else speak at the meeting, so we're gonna we're gonna continue. I'm a lot closer than Rundle Street. If if, if I yeah, if they can prove standing, if they have. I, can I put my objection of record, Mr. Penitar? Sir, I'm a lot closer than Rundle Street. Objections noted, and Ms. Ms. Madsen can testify. Uh, if I Go can, ahead. Uh, could I Your actually articulate it? Yes. I object she, to all of the other testimony that wasn't related to zoning. As the president of the South Side, she's allowed to speak. Yeah, Neighborhood she, associations are allowed to speak. They're allowed to speak if they have an affected interest. When you okay. take a, we're, when you we're take going a look to at it. All right, we're allowing her to speak. Go ahead. I understand. Objection noted. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, now I'm doubly insulted. Let me start with someone came up here and said we, meaning us residents, casting dispersion on us, saying we have a preconceived notion. We do not have a preconceived notion. We are here for the last, I don't even know, 20 hours <laughs> over the last month and a half because we are fighting a zoning issue. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm not quite sure why the expanded um, dissertation on recovery and how compassionate we need to be actually needed to be stated. That should be assumed. There's none of us, well, I can't speak for everyone. But there are many people here that are extremely compassionate. 
that have been touched by addiction. If you want more standing, I had it in my family as well, sir. So now that I've covered the bases, I just want to say we are here that has nothing to do with shunning addicts or not in my backyard kind of information. We are here for a zoning issue. I've done a lot of research. I know, I've read, I don't know, I've read a lot more zoning information and a lot more recovery information and a lot more information on PHPs and different things like that than I ever thought I was ever going to do or need in a lifetime. So that being said, I represent the neighborhood the South Scranton Neighborhood Association for the, and for the last year I have been coming to these meetings asking the zoning board to be respectful of the zoning laws that are in place. I stand up for the neighbors to make sure we are not being treated unfairly or our um, thoughts aren't being considered when a garage goes up or we're gonna add backyard parking, which I've been up here a million times saying that's like an eyesore. So that I have been here at the zoning. So South Scranton several years ago had to deal with Penswood Manor. I know some of the um, documents may have been submitted here with the cases. Penswood Manor started in, 2000, or in 1986 as a private care facility and operated till 2011. In fall of 2011, Penswood leased the first floor and basement to Cedar Residence, a 25 bed state licensed facility that dis was described as quote, a step down unit four men who completed other treatment programs but need special counseling, treatment, life skills training before being able to reenter society. This information is according to a lawsuit filed by attorney Chris Cullen in Scranton. This description of what they did or wanted to do at Cedar Residence is very similar to the description offered by, I'm not even sure what to call it at this point, Sammy, Lakeside, who is the applicant? Have we determined that yet today? Because that planning, the applicant's name was not even revealed. And nobody got onto the planning commission statement yet either. So, Penswood hoped to get formal zoning approval for the treatment center and expand to 40 beds and sought a variance to continue leasing the space to Cedar, Cedar residents. In September of 2011, the zoning board, which some of you may have been on it, Mr. Pen Attorney Penatar, you were here, the bid for the variance, and it was a variance, not a special exception. There is a slight difference, and I'm going to ask for you guys to clarify that for me in a little bit. But they asked for a variance to change use from a personal care home, which now, after hearing tonight's testimony, is what they're considering the closest description as to what wants to be put in on um, Scranton Pocono Highway. So they wanted to change the variance from a personal care home to a drug and alcohol re rehabilitation uh, unity after the facility was cited by zoning officer Mike Wallace. Attorney Penatar, solicitor to the zoning board, was quoted and he said they appealed the notice of violation and set forth an application for a variance for running a treatment center and they were denied both. Not sure what's the difference. That's even a less restrictive zone where um, Penswood Manor and Cedar Residence was located. In October 2011, Cedar residents filed that appeal to overturn the zoning board decision to deny a variance. Also, in other news that I've located, in March of 2011, another entity called Redwood Recovery Centers of Plains proposed a halfway house somewhere in downtown Scranton. That never even made it to zoning because there was objection by the neighbors, and that was more in an um, uh, industrial commercial zone, actually. In June um, of 2013, the zoning board rejected the variance sought by Penswood Manor to convert from a personal care home into a residential treatment facility. The, bo the board denied it partly because the facility, and I quote this, this is in a Scranton Times article, it's also in the documents regarding um, the hearings and the appeals, that it would, quote, alter the essential character of the neighborhood. And that's according to the board's findings of facts and conclusions of law and exhibit in that lawsuit. Again, I'm not seeing any difference in purpose. I see the difference in variance, which may explain why they're here for a special exception. In April of 2016, 
the Pennsylvania Supreme Court denied accepting an appeal to hear the case from Penswood Cedar residents. I'm not sure exactly how it was referred to in those appellate courts. In September of 2016, there was a deadline set for residents to clear the patients. It was September 30th. On June 1st, a deadline was created uh, to close Cedar residents <laughs> and it was set by Scranton City Council because that original um, evacuation or eviction notice was not followed. So as you can hear from this, the zoning board in 2013 did not approve a treatment center, among other things, because again, I'm gonna quote it again, it would alter the essential character of the neighborhood. And this, was, this decision was upheld all the way to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court who didn't wanna hear the appeal. So why now in 2019 is this even under consideration? Are the neighborhoods no longer considered? Like, are the, the zoning districts no longer considered? I'm also concerned that the applicant still remains somewhat, I don't know if it's conflated, if it's anonymous, I'm not sure. Why is that? Who is the applicant? No. Zoning board officers, who, are the, who is the applicant? If I'm not mistaken, there's co-applicants applicants Yeah, tonight. the applicant was the owner and the originally Sammy, Forever Sammy Foundation, which <laughs> assigned, assigned their right to uh, Lakeside NEP, NEPA LLC, I guess it is. As well so as the we, applicant. As well as, as we've offered into evidence, the, right. the owner should diamond uh, 307 LLC. Right, yeah. The just they're okay. all, they're all in the application. Is, they're okay. all in the application. Just, just, just so we're clear, I don't think there has been any assignment to any PA, to Lakeside NEPA LLC. It's just stated that they're going to be the operator, not the applicant. Okay. Okay, why is there no real applicant? Now, these are just random questions. Don't take offense. Is the applicant, applicant a criminal? That he does, that he can't really the, apply the for this? The applicant is, one, the owner and to the operating facility, and they've changed their name here. So the property so owner? Whatever, whatever it is, it's, it's the use that we're here for. You can just have a use and not know who owns it? It doesn't matter in the end because the owner today could be a different owner tomorrow, could be a different owner a month from now. Okay, and that, uh, that brings it's up the, another it's question. It's the use that we're and worried the, about. And if a special exception is granted, it's in perpetuity on that property? It is in perpetuity on that property unless there are conditions set by the zoning board. Okay. Uh, Did you want me to answer the, pen, the difference between this and Penswood? No. Okay. I would. <laughs> she brought it up. She said, no, I don't have to explain it. Not yet, anyway. I'll let <laughs> okay. you know. Well, I'll just look okay, for so. record that there is a difference. So since we don't really know exactly who we would address our welcome to the neighborhood cookie trays to, I don't find that to be very neighborly. I mean, if I'm a neighbor, I go introduce myself. I say, hey, I'm Kathleen Madsen. I'm going to be living here. Nice to meet you. In the beginning of this process, when the zoning announcement was posted, a group of neighbors asked to meet with quote unquote Sammy because that was listed in the paper as the person seeking the special exception. And we were told no. It wasn't going to happen. Not very neighborly again. Jump to last week, I, and I'm all of us. I'm going to have an objection. Uh, the board, sir, the I planning have, asked for. We had an open house, and we went I'm through all to the that. whole neighborhood last Sunday. So. No, you didn't. Okay. So jump up to last week, sir, and all of a sudden there is an open house invitation handed out to certain neighbors. I'm guessing those neighbors are the people that were listed in the application that are within the zoning distance from the poll that he posts everything on. How presumptive is it to host an open house, hand out a flyer with yet another name on it stating Lakeside Treatment Center and what we're gonna do, how we're gonna do it, and open the door and show a facility that didn't even finish a zoning hearing and was given a denial by the Planning Commission? 
If I were you, gentlemen, I would be... If I were you, gentlemen, I would be highly insulted. Because it seems to me that they're just disregarding any opinion and assuming this is just going forward. So I would consider it a slap in the face if I was sitting up there. All of a sudden, there's a big open house. It's like they assume they're already in business. I don't have an open house at a property that I didn't buy yet. I don't have an open house at a business that I didn't open yet. So I have a question. Did any of you board members attend the open house? No. 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 Did any of you board members receive an invitation to attend the open house? No. No, and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll say I'm sure that I'm sure they know the legality of, of not inviting. Yes, that we can invite you. I, I okay. Have that. any of your uh, have any of these board members known that an open house was planned before the planning commission meeting? I, I'm going to object. I, I, we, I did not. It, we're cross examining the board. At this no, point. I'm asking the board for information. I, at the last zoning meeting, I did ask these guys to meet with the neighbors to try to squash some of the issues that the neighbors had. I, I recommended that. I didn't recommend an open house, but I recommended them to when try was, to. What was the date of the last zoning meeting? April 10th. April. I, I don't know the exact date. It was, I think it was April 10th. 10th. Okay, so. You encouraged an open house? I didn't encourage an open house. I asked them to try to set a meeting up to try to, the, the concerned citizens that I figure we're going to have issues After with. After the neighbors already asked for a meeting and were denied. Okay. Uh, I, well, Kathy, if, I, I again, got to stop okay. it there. All right. You, you I'm, getting a, little, I'm getting a little snarky. I admit. We're not, <laughs> we're not the ones here. You're not. I will take it back. All right. Yeah. We're damned okay. if we do, damned question, if we don't. Question removed. Okay. So this invitation really has me and my neighbors wondering if we are really getting a fair hearing here. And you have to have, you, I mean, you got to oh understand how we have to be asking that. I'm going to strike that. <laughs> okay. All right. I, let's, let's get back to the point. Right, Kathleen, that, that's crossing the line. That's, that's, that's crossing really crossing the line. I'm sorry. No, let me I'm finish. Sorry. Let me finish. I apologize. Let me finish. There's not, been, there's not been one case since I've been sitting on this board for three years with the rest of these gentlemen and the woman that's near tonight that did not receive a fair hearing. And I Thank take you, offense Bob. to your statement. I, I apologize. I shouldn't have said that. And I know you do take, I know you guys do what you do because I'm here every month. Okay, now, the applicant's team has really played up compassion. And to be honest, we're all compassionate and we recognize that there is a big crisis here. What we're not playing up is the fact that it's also a business they're opening. A business that in this industry could really earn some profits. And that's fine because that's what a business is set out to do. So, speaking of business, after reviewing an application, I noticed there's no line item for chef, kitchen staff, laundry, housekeeping, or anything related to residents' comfort. Are these services not provided? That's not for us to decide. Well, okay, let's, let me lead that down to this then. If not, who provides the meals for patients? Who cleans their rooms? Who washes their linens? Who washes their clothing? Once again, because I'm asking, that's not for us to decide. Well, it sort of is because is no, this- it's No, that's their, that's their business. Okay. They, they'll run their business the way they well, want to run their business. Well, if they're bringing their own food and they're living in a room wouldn't that be considered a rooming house? No. It no. fits the definition of, of treatment center in our ordinance. That's what the definition that it fits. Okay. I also read about the PHP plans because we were, I know that was discussed at meeting number one. In all of the information I read on PHP, none of it is considered overnight treatment. So, do we have two separate components to this business? Are you going to be renting out rooms to folks that need a place to stay and having a component that will be doing all the therapy stuff from like the nine or 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. time? Like how is that divided? Because if you're just renting out rooms, I'm not sure if that's considered a treatment center and that's up to the board to explain because that wasn't the testimony that was given at the first hearing. The testimony that was given at the first hearing was that it would be a facility, a treatment facility, period, 
They're not renting out rooms to anybody. They're there for well, a, for a, at a least P a 30 day program. Didn't they say at it was least a, a 30 day program? Didn't they say it was a PHP program? Uh, if I can, the record you, at both the first and so the board's aware of it at at the first hearing. Uh, and Attorney Penitar asked for clarification that was given. And at this hearing, uh, it's a specific non-hospital drug-free residential treatment facility as defined in Chapter 28 of PA Code 701. That's what it is. It's not partial hospitalization. And that's what all our testimony for two days has gone to. Okay. Uh I looked into the PA zoning and I came across a paragraph about special exemptions because here this is where we can get a little clarity on this. Uh, in one of the handbooks that I came across, I'm trying to look for my, this one, special exceptions and conditional uses and variances, planning series seven from the governor. A special exemption, and I'm going to read the paragraph, is a permission or approved, approval granted an applicant to use land in a district for a purpose other than the generally permitted outright in that district. The permission or special exception is granted by the Zoning Hearing Board in accordance with the standards contained in the Zoning Ordinance, provided generally that the specific application of the use would not prove injur injurious to the public interest. It is important to realize that the term special exemption is a misnomer. It is neither special nor is it an exemption. It is not a deviation from the zoning ordinance. An applicant for special exception is following zoning ordinance, a special exception use envisioned by the ordinance, and if the express standards and criteria established by the ordinance are met, the use is one permitted by the ordinance. It also says, the difference between a use permitted without qualification and a use permitted by special exception and is a significant difference from the point of view of an applicant is that an applicant for special exception is subject to the jurisdiction of the zoning hearing board. The function of the board is to, do, to determine whether the application is consistent with public interest as defined in specific standards and criteria established in that ordinance. This generally involves factual determinations and the board is vested with discretion in evaluating the evidence presented. All special exceptions for each zoning district are specifically listed under the provisions for each district. If the use, if the use an applicant desires is not permitted in the zone by right and is not specifically listed as a special exception, the application cannot be granted. Thank you so for your, thank you for your dissertation, but we're under, I'm sorry. We're under so 806 my G question tonight. Is, my we're, question we're is, we're under 806 G of our own ordinance, yeah, but and if that's it, what we're here for. But, the, but if it's in the IG, in the industrial, and it's we're under... We're here under a specific section of our own ordinance. That's what we're here for. So how could... So Pennsylvania, you can be above... It tells you the same thing that our well, ordinance no, it, says. It says that the local ordinance can decide what is best for the neighborhood by putting in certain parameters, and the parameters are in 806G. Okay, so it only says special exemptions can be requested for a medical treatment center or in a IG. No, no. Isn't that the, the chart no. that goes across? That's the chart, but we're not under that, under that chart. We're under 806G. Okay, why is it different? Because that's what we're under here. Okay. Okay. Again, the basic purpose and functioning of zoning is to divide a municipality into residential, commercial, and industri uh, industrial uh, again, zones. I, I, I know. We know, what the, we know what the ordinance says, okay? All right, okay? well, I'm here to just ask that you just respect the fact that it's a residential zone and that it was determined to be a residential zone by other powers that be. And if it needs to be changed, it should be changed in the zoning book, not by the strike of a pen that's gonna make this, ver this exception last in perpetuity. Okay? That's fine. Also, Thank you. please don't assume that us neighbors are here because we are against any treatment facility. 
We are here because we are against changing and giving a special exception to an R1 property. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Right. Please raise your right hand. Thank you. Kurt Walsh. I live in 100 Lilac Lane, Scranton, Pennsylvania. Hold on one second, please. Do you solemnly swear to testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do, sir. Uh, name and address? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kurt Walsh. I live in 100 Lilac Lane, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505 on East Mountain. And I don't want to uh, bore all of you. I don't want to extend this uh, beyond what it should be extended beyond. The attorneys are here, I know, of course, to make the legal arguments. And uh, uh, Attorney Penitar is certainly well-versed the zoning law himself, what I hope to do here is perhaps uh, redirect our focus uh, to where I think uh, reasonably we should all be. I don't think this is a battle between uh, two different communities. We have two communities which have competing interests here. Uh, we have uh, that which uh, Mr. Jones represents and his uh, additional uh, assistance. Uh, we know that I think we all have been afflicted somehow in our lives uh, by uh, the addictions and the frailties and the disabilities that we've been speaking about this evening. We've all had some of that. I can't believe you haven't. Uh, we all know there's a need for medical treatment in hospital facilities. Uh, I've had experience with that myself, unfortunately, over the years. Uh, however, I, I also know as a resident in this area or any area, and we all live in homes, we all live in residential communities. I don't think anybody here has anything against those who need assistance, as we're speaking of here this evening. But I think we all know that uh, the zoning board and zoning laws and the planning board and commission all have a purpose. And the purpose is, and I won't want to be in your shoes, by the way, but the purpose is really to try to make an assessment between competing interests. Uh, which exists as they certainly do here. And we know that the residents of the area, and I'm there about 20 plus years now. I've raised my family there. I'm a uh, neighbor of Kathy uh, Harrington. Uh, there's many people that have lived there for decades and they've invested their lives, their monies uh, throughout those decades of living. And again, uh, absolutely acknowledging the interests, the competing interests here this evening, uh, I think the focus here has to be, is there a place for the facility in question somewhere, and I'm not saying I know that, but is there a place for this facility where the competing interests are perhaps not so conflictive, not so severe, where homeowners who have lived there for decades investing their lives in your homes in this residential area uh, aren't at risk. And we, without going into all the details, we all know what those risks are. Uh, is there possibly other opportunities, other options? Uh, as an attorney myself, I represent many businesses. Uh, my representation involves injury work. Uh, I represent medical facilities, nursing homes, other businesses. And I know that with all the business that I represent, everybody has a place. Uh, and there's typically locations in our areas as well for the facilities we're talking about here today, for which, again, there's, there's certainly virtue and uh, valid basis. So all I ask is, uh, as a board, uh, that you remain cognizant, as we all should, that there are competing interests, respect each other and those interests. But keep in mind, if you were a homeowner uh, in a residential area as we are and those that represent here this evening are, uh, how would you feel and how would you best decide this matter knowing the competing interests at hand? And thank you very much. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Name and address, please. Thomas Exeter, 
and I live at 431 Smith Street, Dunmore, PA. I just moved there three months ago. I lived on Cedar Avenue in Scranton, South Scranton. I own a property there. I own a property in North Scranton. And as they're talking about properties, and I bought the house in 06, and I moved out in 2019 because I wanted a better house for my kids or whatever. The property value in Scranton is going down regardless. It's going down. It's, something else has to be done. The, the drugs, I'm not an addict. But my family member, I have family members, I have friends that died, family members overdose. They need something with the drugs. Something has to be done. They talked about Cedar Avenue. That's even at, I live a block away from there. The people that lived around never even knew people were there. Now it's an eyesore because they shut it down and it looks like crap. It's bad and there's nothing. There's kids that go by. No one even knew that people were even staying in there. You wouldn't have known it was a facility unless you were told. You had no clue. They weren't bothering nobody. I'm more scared of the neighbors that live behind me that were stabbing each other and shooting each other. Not that, you know, I mean, the, the drug addicts are walking around. They're, the people, there's AA meetings everywhere in your neighborhood. There's five in South, everywhere you're around you. Them people ain't harming them. They're not going to harm you. The property, like, we need something. I'm 37 years old. Kids are dying. Like, this past couple years is getting so bad that kids are overdosing and dying. It's just horrendous. Something has to be done, and we need help. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Dan, uh, what is the, the plan for? Well, uh, I think at this point. I, I would ask that we at least continue for a, uh, a uh, half hour. It, it's, it's, getting, yeah, uh, it's getting late. Are you anticipating that we're going to be very long? I was anticipating you were going to be very long. Uh, we might be very short. I think we're uh, very short. How long is short? <laughs> Real short. Like, okay. I'd give them some leeway. I All mean, right, go ahead. Ten minutes? If, I mean, if I can. Well, I'm, I'm not going to put a time limit on it. Yeah, no, I'll, but I mean, I'll, I'll just confer to make sure I'm representing the board accurately. <laughs> Yeah, about mm -hmm. 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. We'll go with it. Um, Matt, just, yeah. if you can just clarify so I don't have to object to your clients. Sure. Thank you. Uh, my client is <laughs> Oakmont Neighborhood Association, which is a Pennsylvania corporation and under the Scranton ordinances has standing to participate in a zoning matter. If you have, if just for the purposes of the record, uh, I would have an objection unless one of them actually owns a property within the immediate vicinity. You only need one, so if you could identify one, I won't have to object. I, I'm not going to do that for Mr. Jones because the neighborhood association has standing under the zoning ordinance. I, I, that, that's not correct. Under, I'm just going to put it out there, Mr. Penetar. Under the Vartran decision, they have to have one. But I'll, I'll live and die by we're that. Well, Thank you. We're going, we're going forward. Go ahead. Thank you. All right. So um, I would like to... Uh, Offering to evidence the transcript of the proceeding from the Penswood case that took place in front of this board. I, I, I object entirely. I was not a party to that. Uh, that is hearsay as far as my client. We had no cross-examination rights with regard to that at all. That's extremely prejudicial. Well, as Mr. Jones knows, the rules of evidence are not strictly applied to oh, the, the case. The, and Okay. Uh, but, but, All right. Here's where we're, here's where we're gonna says, here's where we're gonna go to with this. Examine every witness. Here's where we're going to go with this. We're not gonna allow the transcript in. We will allow the case the deci decisions in from Penswood. Can I ask a question, Mr. Penetar? Sure. I'll, I'll, dis I'll disagree with your characterization, but okay. go ahead. That would seem to be highly speculative. With regards to the Penswood case, we have testimony regarding the operation of a, a treatment center meeting the same definition as what's being proposed here as to what the effect was on that neighborhood. Why would it not be equally, if we've heard testimony regarding one fight? Okay, I, 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 I will tell you what the difference between the two cases are. The Penswood treatment facility was not a lockdown facility. The patients were allowed to come and go as they please. They were out in the neighborhood from 
early in the morning to late at night, this proposed treatment center does not have that. Okay, this proposed treatment center is a locked out facility. There's a difference between the two. And that's the characterization that the difference between the Penswood Treatment Center and this, this particular treatment center. And this board, if, if they were, a t and I'm sure if they were to allow this, but I think even if they're gonna vote on it one way or another, they're gonna put a stipulation in that it has to be a locked out facility. So all the testimony you heard regarding other facilities was completely relevant, despite knowing whether locked out, not locked out, everything. I had an objection. I didn't think it, it was relevant. It was, it was objected to all the way through. Okay. That was, that was less than 10 minutes. <laughs> I try to be true to my word. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm All right. here on behalf of the of Oakmont Park Apartments, the owners of that property that is the uh, uh, apartment complex that is directly across the street from the proposed facility. And when we met back in April, Attorney Penetar indicated that if there were people that weren't able to come, they could submit some application or some con uh, comment in writing. So I have a petition that has been signed by 60 residents of the Oakmont Park Apartments, um, specifically objecting to the grant of the special exception. And, Just like and I'm going to object. I have cross examine re uh, examination rights with regard to. Uh, those persons, so uh, petitions that, that I wasn't given. Everybody knows I, who I represent, and I've been in front of planning, so this could have been given to me ahead of time. Uh, I could have subpoenaed any of these particular people. I think it's highly prejudicial. It's against the MPC that I cannot cross-examine them. It's got to be a fair shake for everybody. So uh, if, if an individual, as opposed to a petition that somebody wrote, uh, has some uh, testimony, uh, I... I cannot absorb in my mind that I would have to waive my cross-examination rights, so I've been objecting. Yeah, and I think there's enough testimony on the record that yes. the people and, of Oakmont are in to, objection to with, the, with the facility, to that, and therefore, if I can't listen, I'm, I'm going in your favor. Quiet. Why do you keep going when I'm going in your favor? <laughs> well, he, he, he raised that they would have to show unavailable. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, all right. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Be that as it may, I will comment that at least 60, of 60 residents did voice objections. Now, what the board is here tonight is to determine whether or not the applicant has presented sufficient proof to show that the proposed use will be equally or less objectionable in external effects compared to the pre-existing non-conforming use. This is the standard that we've all been discussing. This is what Mr. Varelli uh, had raised an opinion on. And one of the, but one of the most, uh, I th think, relevant uh, things is whether or not it has been shown that the, that the proposed use is actually compatible with the characteristics of the surrounding area. Now, the surrounding area, as you've heard some of the uh, people speak tonight, it's an R1, which is a strictly single-family residential area, and R3, but which is also a strictly residential area. Oakmont Park Apartments has about 150 one- and two-bedroom apartments directly across the street from the proposed facility. They have at least one-year leases. So the residents there reside for at least a year but many of them have resided there for a much longer period of time. They are, like many of the neighbors who spoke here tonight, very invested in the neighborhood, very interested in how the neighborhood uh, is, is perceived and, and their actual physical safety now. And so what we're talking about then is what is the facility that is being suggested to be, put, uh, to, to be established here. And under this, the zoning board or the zoning ordinance of the city of Scranton, a treatment center is designed as a use providing housing facilities for persons who need specialized housing treatment and or counseling for stays in most cases of less than one year and who need such facilities because of, in this particular instance, because of chronic abuse or addiction to alcohol and or controlled substance. 
or a type of mental illness or other behavior that could cause a person to be a threat to the physical safety of others. That, how, that is how a treatment center is defined. And then the, the zoning ordinance goes down then to say that if you have a, a, a treating, treatment center, then there are other provisions of the zoning ordinance that describe particular uh, um, requirements for a treatment center. And that indicates that the applicant shall provide a written description of all types of residents the use is intended to include over the life of the permit. Any future additions or modifications will require additional uh, he, uh, additional permit by the zoning board. And the applicant shall prove to the satisfaction of the zoning hearing board with the burden of proof being upon the applicant that the use will involve adequate supervision and security measures to protect public safety. And, the, and it indicates also that the zoning hearing board may place conditions on the use as necessary to protect public safety, including conditions on the type of residence and security measures. And I think that what we heard um, from uh, Mr. Conaboy's testimony uh, last week or no, a month ago was that this facility would be 24-7, that there would be 30 men residing there, and at night, between 11 and 7 in the morning, that there would be a staff of three. So whether or not that would be sufficient security or whether they would all be security people, um, Mr. Penetar indicated that the difference in this facility would be that it, that it re indicates that it would be a lockdown facility. However, there was, an art, there was um, I have to mention that there was a letter to the editor from one of the, the people that would be running the facility today indicating that, no, it wouldn't necessarily be locked down. We were led to believe that people would be inside. But that, but that article indicated that they would be accompanied on the outside so that there would be, I mean, it's impossible to think that people would have to be inside 24 hours a day. So there will be people outside on the grounds. And where the grounds are in the front, it's, it's literally overlooking Oakmont Park. If you stand at the front of the facility on Route 307, you can look right over into where the little kids are playing and everything over on Oakmont Park. And that is a concern to the residents there. So again, we said that what the definition of a treatment center actually is. And then, when, in order to get the special exception, they would have the burden of proof of showing that they comply and meet the requirements of, of a special exception. And one of the major requirements there is that that will not significantly or negatively affect the desirable character of an existing residential neighborhood. And the characteristics of a residential neighborhood have been recently addressed by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court in the, the case of Slice of Life LLC um, versus the Hamilton Township Zoning Hearing Board. And in that, it indicated that um, the very benefit and purpose behind the creation of a residential zoning district is to create a residential neighborhood in which the residents may develop a sense of community and a shared commitment to the common good of that community. And it has to do with the stability and with, with the permanence of the residents. And in this instance, what we're talking about is having transient residents there, having people in the neighborhood for between three months and nine, or three, 30 days and 90 days. These are not people that would be vest, um, actually vested in the welfare of the residential community, which so many of the, the uh, uh, in, individuals here spoke about. So that's basically our argument, is that, um, that, it, that, it, that the residents there or the use would not be sufficiently stable and per, uh, permanent so as not to be fairly characterized as purely transient. And in the slice of life decision, it was determined that it was the reason that it was because of the transient nature of individuals that were going to be introduced into a neighborhood that that was found to be in violation of a residential zoning. Now that, that particular case had more to do with something like an Airbnb than what we're talking about. But what the principle was is that if you have a, an R1 or an R3 neighborhood, that's a residential neighborhood, and that therefore the people that are, are, are being introduced into that neighborhood should actually have skin in the game. 
And that's what we're saying, is that we have heard from many residents tonight who have a great deal of skin in the game. And we think that, they have, that their opinion should definitely be presented. And that it hasn't been shown that we're to be speaking about weighing from one, uh, one type of, of argument against another. I don't think that it's been shown enough that this would be in the, the best interests of the residents of the R1 and R3 neighborhoods on the East Mountain. If I can, just for purposes of clarity of the, the record, we have a facility that's an existing 22,000 square foot building. It's already in that neighborhood. Mr. Salmon has already testified to, it's a mixed use type of area, but slice of life has no application with regard to a single family dwelling that you're putting in uh, persons with the uh, B and B doesn't apply. We, we have a, a facility 22,000 square feet with parking. So it, it, it has no application. You have to go with the existing one. Under 806G, it, it, you can, can have... I, Bill, can I interrupt you one second? No, I didn't interrupt anybody Mr. on any of Mr. their closings. <laughs> I didn't interrupt counsel on any of their closing, Mr. not Penn. once. That's no, closing, that's no, arguments, no, not I'll evidence. Let you come. I'll let you redirect. Okay, thank you. So I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Jones. Yeah, yeah, sorry yes, I am not offering testimony, nor did uh, Attorney Powell. This is not testimony, this is just argument. Everybody's rested. All I'm pointing out is this is an existing facility. It, it has a criteria, and your solicitor hit it. You hit those, up, and they're the objective criteria in your ordinance. The traffic, we're, we're probably 40% of what's allowed with PennDOT who controls that roadway. We know that there's no noise, there's no uh, vibration. We're not changing, we're not changing the external. When you take a look at 806G, it says, take a look at the external uh, part of the building. We're not doing anything. We're not changing a building whatsoever. This is, our entrance is in the back. We're keeping it there. We have, you know, it, it's unusual. We put a fence up because we thought people wanted it. If you want additional fencing, you want us to take it down, we'll take it what? down. It's an it? existing property uh, that's there. And what we've offered it for understand. is for a non, and I know I'm somewhat repetitive on this, it's a non-hospital drug-free residential oh. treatment facility as defined oh, I, in okay. Chapter 28, and that's Section 701, ask. and it's more particularly 701A. And uh, this no, deals no. with residential treatment and rehabilitation. And we will live with the conditions. I know I've offered them, and I know you can add them, and, and, and uh, I look forward to those. Uh, we would live with the condition of no more than 30 residents that are there, that there be no methadone, and further, that there be no detoxification uh, drugs administered on this particular premises. And if there are any other uh, conditions that you're looking for, uh, we're here because we know it's an existing medical clinic. You could give, if, if there's 30 physicians there, they can give any drug in the whole world now. We didn't lose that use. That use is still there. Uh, we're not looking for that. We'll waive. Uh, methadone on that. We're mm -hmm. going to give, give that up. We don't have to give anything up because we have the right to do that at, in this neighborhood. People lose sight of the fact that's what's allowed now in this particular neighborhood. But we're, we would offer that as a condition. Uh, with regard to Mr. Scanlon, we all know that he was the district attorney here. He could speak to the particular need and, and uh, for the community itself, uh, whether uh, certain other compatible uses. And is there a need for even this area on that? And with that, I would, for our closing, I would allow uh, Mr. Scanlon to address that. Okay. Well, naturally. No, I'm just placing what was there. He's already categorized those particular uses when he did it. That's how we started. He speaks for himself. Mem members of the, the zoning board, no, I, I, he, we get to close, Danny. This is a whole lot of objection. I didn't object. Yeah, I didn't have one, one objection. To I, I will allow Mr. Scanlon to speak, and then Mr. Bear can say whatever he wants. Say whatever he wants afterwards. He's, he's no. not offering any testimony at all. Yes. As as we heard, uh, both from uh, this witness stand, from residents, uh, from people in the recovery community as we're all aware as people that live within this community. Uh, 
we are in an epidemic. I, I won't repeat that. Uh, you've heard earlier that we're losing up to 100 people a year. Uh, I've dealt with, for my entire career, uh, my legal professional career, crime, justice, uh, almost 75 percent of every case that is prosecuted in Lackawanna County Court deals with substance abuse or mental health issues. Transitioning into uh, zoning is not something that I thought I would be doing. I was approached about this project, uh, realized the necessity, and was eager to jump on. Folks, you heard from what I think are some of uh, the most reputable experts, uh, Mr. Virali, Mr. Conaboy, Pat Salmon, Dave Lopatka. They checked off, I prosecuted cases for 16 years. They checked off, they prosecuted the case. They checked off every element that needed to be proven to your board. Uh, they have shown a reduction in impact rather than just meeting the burden of it not becoming a greater impact. We have established a case. We've gone uh, over and above in that. We did conduct an open house to try to get the community to come up, see what the facility looks like, see what's able to be seen, what they can see from there, from the other sides, come around. Uh, we came to every meeting over an hour early to give everyone an opportunity to ask questions, to talk to us, to address their concerns to us. My clients were here every time for the first zoning hearing, the planning meeting, the continuation hearing, tonight's meeting. We've been here every time. We've offered concessions. Uh, Attorney Jones has opened up, which obviously you could have placed them anyway, but we've, we've opened up the opportunity for you guys to put whatever restrictions you deem necessary so that the citizens here feel better about what it is that's going to transpire. It is a secure facility. It is a lockdown facility. We heard about random tests. We heard about searches. We have beaten to death the non-hospital drug-free residential treatment that won't detox or give out any medications. There won't be people going there seeking drugs. There will be people going there seeking help voluntarily. Long-term treatment that is proven to work. It's evidence-based. Any modifications, any fear that something ugly is going to come from this has to come back before the zoning board. They can't just do something. They've conceded outpatient. They don't want to do an outpatient clinic. We want inpatient, intensive, occupational therapy to teach and to help our customers become productive members of our society. They live amongst us. Let's eliminate the 75% of substance abuse being involved in all prosecutions in Lackawanna County. Let's cut the problem. Let's address the problem. But we have to do it with the facility that's here for our families, for our brothers, our sisters, our sons, our daughters, our grandchildren. It's not an issue that's going to go away. It's not an issue that we can wave a magic wand and find another location. It's a medical clinic. It's perfectly situated and built to house this facility. We've met every element. You've heard it through expert testimony ad nauseum, quite honestly. Uh, Dick Conaboy brings 19 years of experience. Uh, find me a better gentleman. Uh, find me a guy that you would trust more to run such a facility. Uh, the man has saved, I can't tell you how many lives in 19 years. Let him do it here. Let him do it in Scranton. Let him save our sons, our daughters, our brothers, and our sisters. And I just have to ask a rhetorical question. Would we be here facing this same objection if this clinic were, were giving out chemotherapy rather than treatment for substance abuse?
as nonconformity uses may desire to grow significantly in intensity, those uses are intended to be encouraged to relocate to areas more suitable. So when you have a nonconforming use, the idea is to reduce the nonconforming, not expand it or make it more intense. And you don't, I mean, we spend a lot of time, and I know things get over lawyered and it's frustrating, I get that. But you don't need to look beyond the ordinance itself. I mean, traffic, frankly, I don't think they've addressed it. That'll be on the new side. We've heard about another property that's there. We don't know what that use is going to be on a shared, on a shared driveway, but I'll let you decide. More importantly, there's no dispute. The hours are more intense. You can't spin that. That's a reality. So you are undoubtedly taking something that was and making it more intense. And that's important to remember as well. They have the burden of proof of establishing what the nonconformity use was. What it actually was. Not what it might have been. Not what, what it could have been. What it actually was. They could have done traffic counts when, when or got information regarding traffic counts. They could have brought somebody from Vest here. They could have told you how many nurses, how many patients, how many doctors there. They didn't do any of that. They didn't establish what the use was. So for you then to extrapolate what, whether or not this is more intense or less intense puts you in a very difficult position. That's their failure, not yours. And it's certainly not ours. And so with regards to this issue, uh, you know, if this were a dormitory, if this were a B&B, if this were uh, a frat house, those are all things of transient nature, as Attorney Powell represented. And, and, and that's what you're supposed to be looking at in R1. And that's what this case is really about. And, and as far as trying to make in conditions, it is. You know, when you try to hang it out, it's going to be run by one person. Times change. Businesses get sold. And there was a way to protect against this. this the buyer, the owner of this property, Diamond LLC, Diamond 307 LLC, is a sophisticated developer. They know the deal. If you want something approved, they buy it subject to zoning approval before they buy it. You come here, you get the approval. You go through the process, if it applies, great. You made a great investment, you get, the, you get it going. If it doesn't, no harm, no foul. You know, it's not, you guys don't create the problems. You're here to address them in a uniform fashion. And in this situation, this is clearly increasing the intensity, not reducing the intensity of the non Thank you for listening. Um, before we close everything and take a vote, uh, I think we have to complete the record um, because we had sent this to the Planning Commission and Mr. Sweeney has a letter from the Planning Commission as to their decision and I want to put that on the record so that everything is in the record. Didn't you get a copy? No. Huh? no oh. I I didn't get a copy. Yeah. I didn't get a, I didn't get a copy wait, myself. So. Yeah, wait, wait a minute, Bill. I don't know if I have another copy, so let me uh... no, I know I didn't get a copy of that. I just want to complete. The, I just want to complete the record. Yeah. Okay. Jack, would you read the recommendation from the City Planning Commission? Uh, yes, I have a letter here dated uh, May seventh of this year. Uh, from the City Planning Commission to the City Zoning Board, Hearing Board. It references the Forever Sammy Treatment Facility slash 125 Scranton Pocono Highway. It says, it's addressed, dear members, at our May 1st, 2019 meeting, the, the following matter was on our agenda for recommendation to your body. Uh, make recommendation to the Zoning Hearing Board regarding 
request by the Forever Sammy Treatment Facility for special exception approval for a change of use medical offices to treatment facility. Pursuant to section 806G of the city zoning or ordinance, 125 Scranton Pocono Highway, former Greisinger Medical Offices in an R1 and CR zone. The commission has passed the motion by a three to zero vote uh, recommending to your body uh, that the request be denied. Sign okay. now, now we the Chairman James Thomas. Now we can take a vote. No. We we know that and I guess I would have to object to participating in the vote. Sorry to do that to Mr. Forrest. I think the safest thing, Mr. Morris, is to not take a vote. This way it overcomes any objection. I want to thank Mr. Morris for coming out tonight, though, and sitting through these proceedings. Um, as you all know, we're not paid for this job, and it's a volunteer job. And for this gentleman to come and spend four hours, four and a half hours with us tonight, I appreciate his time and effort. You're here. Thank you, Bob. Yes. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, five hours. Well, before we vote or anything, we have some conditions that I think we need to talk about that we want to interject it into this. I, I think let's start with the conditions that Mr. Jones mentioned, which would be there would be no drugs being dispensed at the facility. Yes. Uh, there would be no more than 30 residents, and they would all be inpatient residents. Yes. And this would be a lockdown facility other than if a resident leaves, uh, they must be accompanied by a counselor. I think they were the conditions you set forth. Yes. Are there so, any further conditions? So the let, let's board? get clarification on that, that last one. So if they're to go outside in a gazebo, I don't know what's up there, they're going to have someone with them at all time, and it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation. Uh, could I have a moment? Yep. Ken, I, I don't think it's a one-on-one uh, -on -one situation if someone were to uh, uh, be it. But let's assume, and I, I, I hate to redesign a facility, uh, I would say that if if there is not a one-on-one, -on -one, that we only have a uh, a certain curtilage area. We'll put up uh, six-foot fencing. We'll put cameras, whatever you want, on that particular area. Obviously, we're not having one-on-one uh, -on -one with 30 people because. But I'm going by I, I'm going by your testimony that it's a lockdown facility, and I understand. In my opinion, lockdown facilities you're inside all the time. And, and there, if there I remember, Mr. Conaboy's, if I can remember, Mr. Conaboy's testimony. At the last hearing, it was that no one was going to go outside law because I questioned if they want to go for a, lake, a walk around Lake Scranton and stuff like that, and he said it won't yeah. happen. Yeah, that, that's true. N nothing off-site is it will be unaccompanied. That's but I, I also asked them if, if about being outside on a nice sunny day and everything, and yeah, the answer it, is it will not happen. If, if yes, I, I misunderstood. If your condition is if they leave this facility, will they have to go? in the van accompanied by one of our residents. No, I was asking if they go out in the backyard for a smoke or whatever. Will yeah. you smoke where they smoke or not? But just say they want to go out, if you had a gazebo there and they want to go out in the back and sit in that gazebo, are they going to have a staff member with them? Uh, what I would uh, offer at this point, I, I will gladly confer with my client, but what I will offer is we'll only have uh, a curtilaged area with the uh, fencing uh, that would have it with security cameras that somebody is monitoring who's ever in that yard at all. Then I, then I, I don't understand the, the, the I, I don't know the answer to it. Right, I, I understand, but I mean, I, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but I, it goes against the lockdown facility notion as far as I'm concerned at well, that point. Do you mind if I take sure, a minute and ask? Sure. We've been here this long. Go ahead. Thanks. <laughs> Matt. Matt. Yeah. Hey. 
If I can, uh, we can, we will offer that if anybody uh, goes outside, uh, they will be accompanied. He says that's what they do. Okay. So uh, if that's a condition, uh, if they go outside, they'll be uh, accompanied by a, a staff member. Outside means outside the building? Outside the building. Where, outside the building on the grounds. Yeah, on the grounds. I'm, I'm not here to hide anything. So no, no, let's I, make no, it clear. I, I guess I want to get clarification yeah. before we go and yeah. we leave here. And, and there's a misconception of what we, we put I, in. And so, I agree with you. Thank you. Conceding, what kind of appropriate fencing are we talking about for this residence? Well, I, I just offered that. They said they're going to actually no. have somebody. We don't need fencing. We don't somebody need fencing if there's accompaniment. Yeah, we're going to have somebody accompany them. That's if, better. if they're accompanied, we don't need the fencing. I'm well, we, 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 yeah, I mean, I, 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 so if we take the condition back that they need a super supervision while they're outside, then you'll have your fencing. I'll agree to that too. I, do, do we have yeah, a the detail, I know. And we have no objection to also putting up a fence when they walk outside with them in that particular area. Uh, that's fine. We're, we're here to accommodate the condition. So we'll put up whatever is appropriate. I'd have to ask the zoning officer. I think it's a six foot fence that you have for any outside area and that they also be accompanied. Yep. Yep. With regards to the conditions that we discussed, if somebody could provide some further information regarding the publication activity, yeah, we I, your testimony. We're not done. Just as I understood, we heard testimony that you need 104 square feet for 30 residents. That's about 3,000 square feet in a 21,000 square foot facility. That's a lot of space that's not going to be used for any other purpose. So if you're talking. We have a few more. Yeah, I'm, I'm not here to run away from that issue. I, I, Yeah, I know. I've, I've offered that. Yeah, and for clarification again, um, that it's not to be used now or ever as an outpatient treatment facility? Not without coming back for further zoning okay. approval. I'm sorry. Not, not without coming back for more zoning approval. I don't. I don't think Matt heard the question. What was the question? I asked if that not, we put an amendment into it that it now or never be used as an outpatient treatment facility. Or any other use. Or any other use limited to thirty human beings. We're not done. We're not done. Please. <laughs> I'm here on one application. I. I, 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 I just want to get clarity on everything that we're doing it. So hey, we've been here five hours. Let's finish it up. Yeah. And everyone walks away. Like, Are you we're not talking to you at this time, sir. All right. You had your chance at the at the microphone, so. And there'll be no drug treatment outside as far as uh, methadone or suboxone passed out at this facility. Correct. No the med drugs that are inside the facility are prescriptions that were brought by the patients. And they will be handled by a staff member, if I remember correctly, that in a locked room and a locked cabinet. That is correct. And they would be trained individuals that are passing out them drugs. That's my understanding. Okay. Under the licensing, I believe that's required. Thank you. Good. Folks, we, we, we want to be good neighbors. Uh, any other conditions that you want to offer, we'll, we'll gladly address. Uh, with regards to uh, any other potential use for the other, drive, the other property, if... Uh, but we're not, we're not, we're not here for that property. Yeah, I know, but you have an applicant that might appear before you in the future with regards to that property. We'll, nice. decide. we'll, we'll decide it then. At that time, I know. All right, so I know we're going to upset a lot of people, but this, I'm going to make a motion that we actually don't vote tonight. We have the right for 45 days. That's right in the beginning. We've had five hours of testimony tonight and almost three hours of last time. And, yeah. and it's an awful lot of testimony, and we're going to get the transcripts and go through them because there's still areas that I'm not sure of what I heard the testimony right or anything like that. And I think in all fairness to both parties that 
I'm going to make a motion that we utilize the 45 days. Uh, I think we can actually come to the next meeting, not go 45 days, and have our vote announced at the next meeting, which is scheduled for June 12th. <coughs> Second. Mr. Gatsons? Yes. Mr. Marks? Yes. Mr. Paul Tessa? Yes. Chairman Walsh? Yes. Vote of four to zero. We're going to make a vote on the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Meeting adjourned.